What's up my friends, welcome back. Today we are going to talk and also study this infinite energy nonsense and why the free energy or perpetual generators don't exist. And I'm doing this video because there are a lot of misinformation videos online. Actually, I got a little bit angry when my uncle sent me a video from this channel. And in less than a month, this video got up to 7 million views and the project can be any more fake. Usually in this kind of videos you hear stuff like no, we don't create energy from nothing. That would be impossible, obviously. We are actually generating the power from the magnet's magnetic force. But how is that? You also hear something like, the power output of the generator is higher than the input of the motor, so we can use the extra power from something else. But what extra power? Also in these videos, with just a simple car alternator, you can generate thousands of watts. So, people are working in nuclear reactors for millions of dollars when you can just generate energy with just a simple motor and a car alternator. Come on! So, in this video I want to go step by step explaining you why these videos are fake. So guys, let's get started! These PCBs were manufactured by PCBWay, and the finish quality is very good, especially with these gold-plated pads. If you want to finish your product faster, you could also ask PCBWay to make a panelized order, where you receive multiple PCBs on a single panel. Together with this, you can also order the SMD stencil from PCBWay, and use it to add solder paste, and then solder all the components at once, and by that you save time and effort. All the orders are high quality, and you could select a lot of settings, such as the thickness, flexible PCBs, the color of the solder mask, the amount of layers, the material, the surface finish and more, so upload the Gerber files directly on PCBWay.com and make the order in just a couple of minutes. What's up my friends, welcome back. So let's start with a quick list of what we should go over in this video. Step 1 is to understand what is the magnetic induction and what kind of forces are involved. So with this step we understand how a generator works and how to create electricity using magnets and copper coils. And then step 2 is to talk about the power transfer from the generator to the motor and from the motor back to the generator. And basically this will be the perpetual loop that all these fake videos are showing. So we will see that as well. And step 3 is to talk about power. The electrical power and the mechanical power and also about power conversion. Is it possible to have a higher power output than the input? Well, we will see that. The step 4 is to talk about the creation of power and also about the magnets, and what kind of energy they store. And step 5 will be to talk about the power losses. There is no generator, no converter or any other device that is 100% efficient, so we must talk about that. And step 6 will be to merge everything that we have learned on these previous steps and understand why this perpetual free energy nonsense is fake. So guys, let's begin. Okay, so here I have a magnet and this is a copper coil that I've took out from a transformer and I'll connect this to my oscilloscope in order to see the voltage output from this coil. So as you can see, if I move the magnet in front of the coil, we get a voltage induced inside of that coil, as you can see on the oscilloscope. But if I stop, we get nothing. So why is that? This already tells us that we are getting the energy from me moving the magnet and not from the magnet itself, because it's me who's putting in the energy in order to get the voltage at the output. So the theory goes like this, a magnet will create a magnetic field around it, and when I move this magnet in front of the coil or inside the coil, the magnetic flux that's passing through the coil will change, and that's what induces a current inside of this coil. But this process is also vice versa, and that means it could go both ways. And what I mean by vice versa is that if I apply a voltage to a copper coil, it will create a magnetic field, as you can see here. So as you can see I'm applying voltage to this coil and it gets magnetic. So basically this is vice versa, because with a magnetic field you can create voltage, and using voltage you can create a magnetic field. But you see it's not that easy. When I move the magnet in front of the coil, it will apply some kind of force to the coil. But then the coil will apply the same force but in the opposite direction to the magnet, because that is the third law of Newton, to any action you get a reaction. So basically the magnet will get slowed down by the induction process. 
So basically that means that if I move the magnet in front of an open circuit coil like this one, I should feel nothing. But if I move it in front of a closed loop coil like this one with a load at the output, I should feel some kind of force opposing to the magnets. As you can see the LED should turn on. So this force in this case is very small, but for the motors and the generators, under a lot of load, that force on the magnets will be a lot higher. Ok guys, so far so good. By now we should know that moving a magnet in front of a coil should induce a current into that coil, so that will create a voltage at the output. And that should be the gist of this part till now. By the way, this is called the Faraday law of magnetic induction. So let's go now to the next step and understand even more. And in order to get to the next step, we must know that motors and generators are working on the same principle of magnetic induction. And as you can see, this is an electrical motor and inside we have the copper coils and also the magnets. So now we can get to the next step. So here we have a brushless motor and as you can see it has a triple phase input. But an electrical motor could also be a generator. Because if I apply voltage at the input, the motor will spin. But if I do the opposite, if I spin the motor, it will generate voltage at the output. So here we have one phase of this normal brushless motor connected to the oscilloscope and when I rotate it, as you can see, it will generate a voltage at the output. So at this point you should know how this motor is able to generate voltage using its magnets and its copper coils inside. And that voltage was out from just one phase of this brushless motor. And it's very important to mention that this is a triple phase one. And that's because the first error that we can see on these fake videos is that they always use just one phase from the car alternator. But basically any car alternator is like a triple phase generator, something like this brushless motor. And triple phase is always a lot more efficient than using just one phase. So why not using as well a triple phase motor? Well, their excuse is always that they don't have one. But a triple phase motor usually costs pretty much the same as a normal one, as a one phase motor. So if you want to make a good experiment, why not just use the triple phase motor as well and get higher efficiency? Because after all, these perpetual experiments are all about efficiency. The higher, the better. But in these fake videos, they only use just one phase, which is the worst decision. Anyway, let's get back to the explanation. Ok, so now here I couple one motor, which is considered to be the generator, to the other motor, which will be the mechanical motor. And as you can see when I rotate one, the other one will also rotate. And that's because the voltage that is generated here is supplying the other motor. You get the idea. So what they do in these fake videos is to merge the shaft from the generator with the shaft of the motor. So the generator will create power, we supply that power to the motor, the motor will spin, it's connected back to the generator, once again the generator will create more power, once again we supply that to the motor, and so on, and we close this loop. And this is the so-called perpetual power generator. So this is where we can see the second mistake of these fake videos. Because in order to merge the shafts of the motor, they always use some kind of belt, maybe a chain or gears. And remember, we are looking for the best efficiency scenario. But using a belt would be the worst scenario, because a belt is very hard to bend, it will get hot and also create a lot of friction. And the same goes with the chain. The best scenario will be to place the motor face to face and using a coupler you can connect the shafts together, because in that way you don't create friction and you get the best efficiency. But they never use couplers, so they are using belts. So why is that? This is not efficient at all. But anyway, let's assume that there are no power losses with this system and the generator and the motor are both of, let's say, 800 watts. And let's also assume that the entire electrical power will get transferred, will get converted into mechanical power. So from 800 watts of electrical power, we pass to 800 watts of mechanical power, which is more or less one horsepower. Let's assume that, which is impossible, but anyway, let's assume that. In that scenario, all the power from the generator will get transferred to the motor, so all the power from the motor will get transferred to the, to the generator and so on, and this will only close the loop. But in this scenario, we are not creating extra power, we are only feeding the same loop, which is impossible to know, but let's assume that ideally this will work. But the worst part of these videos is that they are getting even more power than the input. How is that possible? So the next level of fake of these videos is that they get more power at the output than the input. So let's assume that we have a 100% efficiency system, even with that, you can't get more power at the output than the input. In their example, they are using a 2000 watts motor to spin a 3000 watts generator. So magically they get 1000 watts of free energy 
How is that possible? Is this a power multiplier? Is this magic or what? Well, their explanation is very easy, but also very, very wrong. All these videos are lying to us that they get the extra power out from the magnets. But how is that? Basically, they show us how they hack the car alternator with some permanent magnets and just like that they pass from a 1000 watts generator to a 3000 watts one. So magically, they create extra power? How is that? Okay guys, so before I explain you this magnet energy nonsense, another error that we have in this so-called experiment is that just because a generator could output 3000 watts, that doesn't mean that it will always output that power, because that will be its maximum power. But in order to achieve that, and assuming this is a 100% efficient system, which by the way is impossible, it will need at least 3000 watts of mechanical power at the input, right? But they just told us that they will use a 2000 watts motor. So could a 2000 watts motor be able to supply 3000 watts of mechanical power at the generator? Well, it can't. So what it should happen is that the generator will slow down, reducing the voltage, reducing the current output, and with that reducing the power output but we don't see that in these fake videos. Actually, the speed of the generator is always the same. Even if, and I say, even if this were true, we should at least see that the generator is slowing down when they connect an extra 800 watts drill at the output. How is that even possible? But no, the motor is always the same speed, it's constant. So why is that? Anyway guys, so far so good. So let's get back to this magnet nonsense. This here is a neodymium magnet, it's very powerful. So they are saying that the this is not magic, but they get the extra 1000 watts out from these magnets because they have a lot of power, so they have this energy inside that could deliver it, as it would be a generator. So let's talk about these magnets. So magnets have potential energy, but what is a potential energy? Well, it will be something like an empty battery. In order to use that energy inside of the battery, you first have to charge the battery. And by charge the battery in this example, will be you moving the magnet. So you move the magnet, you charge it with energy, and then the magnet will pass that energy to the coils. Another example will be gravity, which is also potential force. This object here on the table has no gravitational force. Why is that? Well, because it's not moving, it's fixed in place on the table, so it has no energy. But if I use my hand and lift this object, it will now have a potential energy, which is gravitational. And if I drop it, it will convert that energy into speed. But if it's fixed on the table, it doesn't have any energy. It's me who is putting in the energy with my hand by lifting the object. So the energy is not coming from the object, but from me. And the same will happen with the magnet. So in order to get energy with these magnets, I first have to move these magnets. So it's not the magnet which is creating the power, but me, by moving it. In this case, by moving the motor. So the magnet is only transferring that power, in this case from mechanical power to electrical power inside of the coil. So for this fake experiment, that mechanical force is made by the motor and not by the magnets. So once again we have the same problem. It's possible that a 2000 watts motor could create 3000 watts of mechanical power to apply to the generator? Well, no. The magnets only transfer that power from mechanical to electrical. So magnets can create magic. Okay guys, so till now we didn't take in consideration the power losses. Any device on this planet has power losses. The wires are getting hotter and that's power loss. The friction between the belts or the chains is also power loss. The inertial resistance of the motor and the shaft is also power loss. The conversion from electrical to mechanical and back to electrical is also power loss. Actually, that is very big. If you take a look at the metal plate of a motor like this one here, you can see something like this. 2000 volts and a current consumption of 5 amps. So if we make the math, that will be 1100 watts, right? But then we can see that the mechanical output is of 1 horsepower, which converted to electrical power is only 750 watts. So basically 350 watts are lost with this electrical to mechanical conversion. And on top of that we add the temperature losses, the friction and so on. Ok guys, so this is the final recap, all in one, with everything that we have learned in these steps. So by now you should know that this perpetual, infinite and free energy video is fake. You can't have more power at the output than the input even if the system is 100% efficient, which by the way is also impossible. So, you can generate power out of the magnets. They only store the mechanical power and pass it to the coils, in a sort of speed. The entire system should also react to the external power consumption of the drill, and the speed should get lower and lower, but we never see that in these fake videos. Also, the triple phase is a lot more efficient than only one phase, so why they use only one? 
also the belts and the chains are the worst, so they should use shaft to shaft couplers. And last but not least, the power losses are quite big with this setup, so only with that you should know that this experiment is very very fake. But then, how do they do it? Well, we have a lot of ways to fake such an experiment. So my idea is that they are using batteries, a DC motor and something like this, which is an inverter. So first they use a small motor, something like this one here. They can easily fit this inside of the other motor or inside of the car alternator. So basically they take out the stator, the coils inside of the motor and so on, and connect this small motor to the main shaft. I know that that process will take a lot of time, but it will be a lot easy to make if you want to fake a video, right? And then they will have enough space to fit a few of these batteries, and this could store enough power to rotate the motor, which will be connected to the generator shaft. So using batteries, a small DC motor, we get the rotation. So that's why we can see a constant speed, because batteries will output a constant power. But then how do they power the external drill with 220 volts AC? Well, this here is a 12 volts inverter, so basically it will create 220 volts AC from 12 volts DC. This one that I have is just 200 watts, but we can easily get a bigger one of maybe 800 watts. And if you take the circuit out of this box, you can see that the circuit is very small and it could easily fit inside of the motor or the generator as before. So we supply this with more batteries or maybe the same battery pack and voila, we get 220 volts AC, so we can power the external drill. And a few of these batteries could power the 800 watt drill for a few minutes. And that's enough for them to record a fake video. So that's how I think they make this experiment. So guys, I hope that you have learned something new. I've made this video because I was getting very mad to see people spreading such fake information. And these people are not stupid, because judging from their content, they know what they are doing for sure and they know that the experiment is fake, but they still decide to upload it. And that video got 7 million views, and if you check the comments, people are believing it. It's more, they even ordered the parts to make the same experiment. And that makes me very upset. Anyway, I hope that you liked this video and that you have learned something new. The main idea of this video is not to trust an experiment that you can see on YouTube. And if you don't trust my video, just take your time and check all the steps in this video and get your own opinion. I've might made some small errors in this video, but that's because I sometimes have a hard time expressing myself, but the main idea should be quite clear. Anyway, thanks again and see you later guys. Hey, so one more video that ends, I hope that you like it. Okay, so listen, if you want to buy my merch, my t-shirts, you have the links below for my shop and I promise that I will make more designs. And also maybe you would comment below which one you like more and what more designs you would like to see because in that way I could start designing them and post my new t-shirts. So thank you for all the support and I'll see you in the next video.